women have been speaking on hard week soft life that is they believe that if a woman a black woman has a hard week like a week that hasn't been straightened hasn't been laid properly they will easily attract a white man that rich white men love hard weeks they love women who don't look well put together especially black women they don't want the posh black women they want the black woman with the like crazy week so who there are some ladies who are for it. there are some other ladies who are against there is so much controversy around this subject and on tiktok and instagram we see these women who have succeeded to use their hard weeks to attract the white guy the rich white guy living the, the soft life like the rich white guy spoils them and finance their lifestyle like posh and expensive lifestyle so this has made so many young girls on social media especially on tiktok i see them taking their wigs rubbing them on the ground like smashing them riding the car over the wigs and making them look so uh, trashy and then put them on their head and go out to attract a rich white guy Without much ado, let's look at a few videos of these ladies talking about hard wig, soft life. Hard wig, soft life, where I, your host Ruthie, teach you the ways of attracting a billionaire. Step number one, honey, if the wig is on your hairline, wrong, push it back and up, higher, higher ladies, higher, the higher the wig, the higher the income, earn it. <laughs> Move the hair forward, take pieces, twist them, twist them quickly, quickly, faster. You don't have time, the billionaires are getting snatched up. Sing it with me. The wig is high, it's tilted, it's matted, it's slanted. Must accessorize. Ah, hot. Now that you've perfected the hair, lipstick, loud and proud. You want hot pink, bright red. Do you think we're going to go on the lip line? This is, this is too nice. It's too perfect. Okay. Outside, whatever you learned in school about coloring inside the lines, uh, they were wrong. Now, <laughs> yes, oh my god, yes. But remember my lesson from yesterday when you think you've had enough blush, please add more blush. This blush is apricot from Bobby Brown. Blush your way out of poverty, ladies. <laughs> Don't blend it. We've discussed this yesterday. Do not blend it. Oh, want to look like Wendy Williams. Okay, built like Wendy Williams. I will find me a rich man. Girls out, chest up, up, up. Wig up. The higher, the more income. Despite the comedy, <laughs> she's so funny. <laughs> Girls, that's a pew, a clear example of hard week soft life like you need to literally look like a clown to attract a rich white billionaire i mean like how many billionaires do we have in this world how many from statistics from research we know that we've got just 0.1 percent of the entire world population of billionaires and Black girls are out there trying to look like clowns in order to attract a billionaire. It's like 0.0001% chance of you to attract or to hook a billionaire. Like seriously, where is this all from? Like <laughs> All the black girls are going crazy and wild because they want to attract a billionaire. Hard wig, soft life, yes or no? That's not actually the question. You need to be asking why, why does it work? I've seen a lot of people talking about this and unfortunately a very few people actually understand the underlying reason. It is not because these guys don't care as much about beauty standards. It is not because they're too naive to know what to expect from black beauty standards. It's because if you cannot meet those beauty standards as far as the black cultural expectation goes 
you are marking that by wearing a bad wig, that signifies to them as outsiders out of the community that you are not backed or well connected to the community very much. Because if you were, your wig would be laid. You would have the connections, the resources, and the cultural reinforcement for that to happen. When you walk out into these predominantly white spaces, like y'all are gonna go put on your crunchiest wigs and go socialize with them, you are signifying, for better or for worse, realistically or as a ploy, that you are, oh, so vulnerable and disconnected from the rest of black culture. They want a black woman, they don't want the black culture. You know what I mean? They want the object, they don't want the people. They don't want the power and the assertion that comes behind it, they want to have you. You get what I'm saying? Remember who these people are, hmm? So, I'm not the kind of person who's gonna tell you what to do in life. However, it's very important to me that people are making informed decisions because without the correct information, you are not actually consenting to what you're doing and you may find yourself getting into trouble and in situations that you don't actually wanna be in. So understand these white men are not naive because any ex worker will tell you that they know that if they have the ability, they actually want the, the girl with the laid wig, but she's not gonna put up with as much stuff right she's not as desperate for it she's not online considering let me go put on a bad wig and get married to a random rich white man right again i'm not trying to slight anybody for what they do and i'm not saying that you can't be happy in an interracial marriage what i am my personal bias is that i don't support the idea of doing things specifically just to marry rich when it involves putting that before everything else or making concessions um, and compromises to your own character in order to have it because that is a limiting belief that basically says you don't believe that you can be well off and wealthy and happy in a more well-rounded way that you're going to have to make some kind of sacrifice to do it and to get it and and that's where the wearing a bad wig or you know trying to find yourself uh, a billionaire or a millionaire or whatever even though you don't genuinely like these people like I can't support that because that's not my platform. I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying like that's my bias so that you know whether or not you want to listen to me. But again, my point is hard wig theory. It does not work because white men don't know the beauty standards or don't care about what you look like. It's because you are signaling that you are alone. You are signaling that you are not rooted in the black culture. You are a black body, very beautiful, very appealing, very attainable, but you are not empowered. Your ancestors are not walking with you. The community is not walking with you. You don't necessarily have all of these people surrounding you that come from the standing on 10 toes that the black culture may come with. Therefore, no on. They are coming to you with the hard week because they know you are an easy target. It's easy to get you. It's more difficult for them to back the black girl with the sleek late week than a black girl with a tacky week. Because they know if you're tacky means you're disconnected to the black culture, to the black community. So you are easy to go to them. You are like, I'll put it in Dr. Umar's terms, in his own words, you are like leftovers from the black community. That's what the white guys come for. Come for. They come for you because they feel that you are the outcast. You are the leftover. That's the signal you're giving. I'm not saying that you are these things, but when you try to, to wear a, a tacky wig, a hard wig, to attract a white man, a white rich man, it means that you are putting down your own standards. You are demeaning your own self because you want to satisfy them. And you know what? They're not coming to you because of the weak. They're coming to you because you look easy. You are like an easier target. It's easy for them to get you. And you're giving the signal that, okay, I'm desperate. This is what I want. And I can do anything to get what I want. So that's why they come to you. And I concur with everything she said. Let's continue. No judgments from family, from community. You don't have a group chat, yada, yada, yada. Because if you did, your wig wouldn't be looking like that. They know. They know. 
they know. If a hard wig equals a soft life, I'm about to find the crunchiest, stiffest, most hardest wig I can find at the beauty supply store and sit that bitch at the top of my head like a yarmulke. Okay? This is another part of it. When we're talking about bad wig theory, hard wig, soft life, my t what I'm saying is y'all think it's like cute. And I'm, again, not telling you what to do, right? But I'm telling you that there's an underlying reason that that works. And it's because when you have a messed up wig like that, you are kind of signaling that you don't have anybody black really looking out for you. So you feel like one of the good ones, one of the accessible ones, one, you're, it's ex exceptionalism, right? Like you're not black, black, you know, you're just black. That's what they want because it's easier for them to access. This person says, it's the same for white women who only go for black men. They look for the ones who are rejected and make them feel special. Hello, like, really, y'all? Think about it like this, because this is a really good point. Think about the black woman, I'm sorry, the white women who go out of their way to only date black men, right? They want to feel special. They want to get that specialness. And what do we think about the black men who specifically just go for those snow bunnies, right? We're like, you don't even like your own women, or you've got a fetish, or you've got whatever. You're objectifying these girls. And we tell the white girls, like don't think that this is like special good attention they're just objectifying you and what do they do right they have hairstyles they will get some crunchy micro braids box braids i mean they will go ahead and get that little bob that little bob <laughs> they will go ahead and get that bob with the highlights they will signify with their hair who they're available for and who they're not and when they have those hairstyles black men know this is the one who has left the group and will come over to me i will be able to have access to her they also know that she's more accessible in the sense that she does not have as much backing from the white community should anything go down now ultimately that's foolish because she's always gonna be white you're always gonna be black so watch out for that but that's what it says right like i've left my tribe for yours okay that's what the hair is signaling so when we have these bad wigs when everybody knows there there are hair standards for black women whether we have our hair straightened we're wearing a protective style or wearing wigs whatever this generally within the culture you don't start wearing a bad wig until you're somebody's church grandma and you've got that same old wig thrown on the only other time that you see somebody with such a bad wig on is when you have somebody who's going through it and or they are separated from the community for better or worse i'm not talking about why they are but that they are that they don't have a whole lot of just the community know-how flowing around them which would have caused them to know how to set their wig or get their wig later whatever it was it's signaling that you do not have all these other black people around you again and y'all are saying oh it's not that deep you're not that deep please leave my page this is for the people who think so you're signaling that you are not surrounded by other black people that makes you more accessible that makes it so that you're not going to have maybe as many blackity black opinions that you're not going to have as many blackity black people influencing the decisions that you're making giving you examples of treatment or whatever 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 i want y'all to remember that one of the ways to get one over on people is to seem like you don't know better like weaponized incompetence is a thing and there's something to be said and i'm not saying it's weaponized incompetence but there's something to be said for how willingly y'all some of y'all believe that there's no way that this could factor in you have to understand that there's conscious and subconscious aspects to people's minds i'm not saying that every tom dick and harry who's looking at these girls with the bad mismatched wigs is going like oh yeah she's ostracized from the community i'm saying it's subconscious it uh, dr uma had said this before and i will tell you she is so right 100 percent, because dr uma said this why is it that most of the successful black men go after the leftover white women? This is not an insult, but it's reality. Like when you look at it, they go after the normal black white woman who is just living her life, who is just doing nothing. They go after her and they want they make her their wives. Why do they do that? Why don't they go for black women? It's the same. So she's making the comparison the same to uh, the same as black women going to use tacky wigs 
like really bad hard wigs to attract white rich men because they want these men to spend money on them whereas they don't like these men like love they don't want to be with them like for the rest of their lives they just want to live the soft life and they want the rich white men to pay for the soft life but this is it as she's rightly said when you wear these hard wigs and in your mind, you're trying to attract the guy who is going to pay for your lifestyle. You are, in a way, portraying yourself as desperate, as the, the outcast of the black community. Because as a black person, we always have a community. We always have that family member. We are always in the chat where someone will recognize, someone will see your hairstyle and tell you that, oh, your hair is bad. Can you do your hair? And if you can't even do it, some people will even propose to pay. For you to do your hair and at most we always have like two three family members who can braid our hair who can do our hair so we can do we do diys a lot we can do our hair by ourselves like me i did mine like the one i have now i did it by myself that's how artistic we are so she's really saying that if you, as a black girl, is going around with a tacky wig, hard wig, claiming that you want to attract a white guy to give you the soft life, girl, that's a signal to the white guys that you are the easy, you, you are easy to get. Like, that's easy access. It's easy to get to you because <laughs> you don't really look like you belong to the black community because black girls are always slick, always laid, always sharp. You know, they're always looking smart, gorgeous, and sexy. So, girl, put your game tight. Because when you're going to have the soft life, what about after the soft life? Like, have you ever, like, sat down to think about what happens after you get the soft life? Because getting the soft life is not the ultimate. It's not the, the highest point of satisfaction. It's not the highest point of happiness. Are you happy? after getting the soft life is that the man you want is that the man you want to spend the rest of your life with of course 99 percent of black girls don't want to be with white men for the rest of their lives that's the truth that's the bitter truth we need to tell these to the white guys but of course most of the white guys who go after these hard weak hard weak black chicks don't really care they just want to have the fun of having a black girl. They don't want you. They don't want your culture. They don't want to be with the black community or whatever. They just want to get laid with a black chick. They want to get the experience. And that's it. Let's continue. It's signaled. It's nonverbal. It does not even need to be said. And it does not even need to be consciously thought. It's the same way that y'all sit up here and understand that a lot of guys will only specifically hit on you when you leave the house looking bummy. And it's not because, oh, I, I just like your natural beauty. It's not because this, that, and the other. Because they are sitting on Instagram and they're liking the Instagram baddies pics. Mm -hmm. They like the beat. They like the bust mm -hmm. down. They like all of that. Yeah. But they won't walk up to that girl because they don't have what it takes to step to her. They will step to her when she goes to Target with no makeup, looking bummy in sweats because they assume that she's more accessible at that time. Y'all need to be aware of when you're signaling accessibility. Do with that what you will, but understand that when somebody is excited by your accessibility to them, what that says about them and their intentions with you. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to tell you the two reasons these women are probably actually getting these men, and it's not because of their bad wig. So the first thing is the confidence that they carry. I'm going to tell you right now, when I see a woman whose wig is out of place, mom is where my wig has even been out of place. Listen, baby, I'm still walking around like all the confidence, top tier, like this joint is slayed to the ends of the earth okay one of the things that a man is really attracted to is a confident woman let's not get confident confused with cocky 
arrogant because sometimes people will carry themselves in a way when their wig and whatnot is slayed when their face is beat that doesn't actually exude confidence it exudes arrogance and don't even think you can step to me because how dare you i look like this so it's not the bad wig that's getting these women these men a lot of times it's just the confidence that they carry in life that goes way beyond what they look like that the men are actually drawn to the second thing is men do actually prefer women who are like more natural so they might be thinking that this bad wig is their natural hair when i met my okay the first reason confidence of course she's right yep every man everyone even you like every human being likes someone who exudes confidence not arrogance but confidence okay but she talked about like uh, a, a woman who is who's had her makeup done her hair laid looks all with, well put together will have some some level of confidence but she will be more arrogant than a woman without makeup so she says that it's easier for men to to access the woman with confidence without any makeup than a woman with confidence and makeup because the the woman who's had all the makeup and everything feels that she's top tier and she deserves like the best and any average man or average person who goes to her wouldn't have access to her but the one without any makeup is confident that's how they see it they see like she believes in herself and she's so confident to go out with her face without any makeup and she can still go about her day without feeling so low of herself so in a way, this makes sense. Let's check the second point. Hair. When I met my husband, I didn't have on any makeup. Uh, my hair was not in a weave, a wig, or anything. It was so basic. And he was like, one of the things that attracted me to you was the fact that you were not all done up. Now, sometimes I like to have fun with the makeup, but my husband, he can literally do without it. And most men can literally do without it because at the end of the day, you don't wake up like that. The moral of the story actually is, if you want to get an amazing man that's going to love you well, be your authentic self, be confident, not cocky, and who that authentic self is and love yourself well. And there's gonna be somebody that's waiting to come and love you well also. A truly transitioning point in my dating life is when I started to value the person that God created me to be. And I really think the more I value that, the more I started to exude that, and the more I exude that, it caused me to meet my husband. And a lot of that had to do too with just because I stopped putting up with so much trash and so much crap. So yeah, I don't think it's the bad wigs. <laughs> Being your authentic self, self-worth, self-love will attract the right people to you, attract the right person towards you. Okay, but she made a point that most men love women who look natural. Hmm. Who are the men who are online liking and rewarding the women who really look superficial, over-filtered, they look fake? look plastic online it's the men it's the men so truly women don't know what the men want even men don't know what they want because men who say we want natural women we want a woman who looks natural we want a woman who looks uh, who doesn't do makeup who doesn't do like so many complicated styles on her hair fake nails and all that I don't like plastic, I don't like this, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But they are the ones who are online rewarding these women, chatting these women, paying for luxurious vacations for these women, hooking up with these women. Do you get this? Like, how is this possible? Men don't want this, they want that. They don't want this, they want that. At the end of the day, we don't know what the men want. What do men really want? But the truth of the matter is that you need to love yourself. You need to have self-worth. You need to value yourself. And you need to be your authentic self. Don't fake it. Don't try to be someone else. But if you love makeup, do makeup. If you love to look good and look sleek, all well put together, 
being all well put together do your makeup and still be yourself don't try to be someone else and don't try to be arrogant you can still be confident without being arrogant because being conf confident and being arrogant can be easily misconstrued people can easily misunderstand you when you are overly confident try to be naturally confident i'll say naturally confident i don't know if this is right but that's my phrase for that I think that it's the confidence that these beautiful women carry and they understand that they are beautifully and wonderfully made regardless of what other people may think about their wig, what other people may think about them, period. And so have that confidence, carry that confidence and baby, it'll work out well. I only have three hours to get ready. It's when I tell you the comments under that video have been killing me, hard wig, soft life. I'm about to turn my wig backwards. Anywho's, I'm ready for the soft life. I got the wig ready. Let me say this. No one in this app is ever going to bully me onto learning how to glue my wigs. Yes, and thank you, girl, because somebody had to say it. We are so tired of living out here in these streets with these bad wigs, girl. We're so tired. We're so tired. So the trending conversation on TikTok right now is hard wig, soft life. The ongoing joke is black women who wear wigs that are little, kind of out there, kind of beat up, not all the way situated, they tend to attract rich white men. Here is my theory on why that is. She's fun. She's charming. She's exciting. She doesn't give a damn. She's just out to have a really good time. She is out to live her life and be loud and boisterous and be seen. And a lot of these men who have resources, that is all that they want. They want a happy, loving, pretty woman on their side. A lot of them, they tend to have um, expensive taste outside of, you know, the hippies. And they tend to fit right into their world. Just having a good time is all that they want. And a lot of women whose wigs are like this, they don't care. They don't think too hard about it. They're just enjoying life. And that's what these men want. Someone to enjoy life with. Think that through. Just think that through. Yeah. Most of these men just want to enjoy life. They want someone to fit into their world. That's what I said in the beginning. Like most of the rich white guys are not coming because coming to you because of your weak because you are black no they're coming because they, f they just want to enjoy life they want you to fit into the world and they see you as an e easier access it's easier it's easy to access you because you look like someone who doesn't really care like you don't put so much emphasis on little things like your hair you know so that's what they want guys what do you think about this hard week soft life and the lady in question the lady in the last video is irene major she's married to uh an oil baron a british oil baron a billionaire in britain she lives in a castle she's got nine kids and she's got maids and she lives like the expensive posh life you know but irene major is also one of the like she helped her husband to build his world of course he was a rich man when she met him but she has helped him she has joined him him to build his world and she has made nine babies for him you know so she's not just there to to live like the posh life to live the soft life she's also she fits into his world she is also doing business ventures she's jointly helping him to build his empire so girls all you want billionaires you want millionaires are you ready to be a millionaire's wife are you ready to be a billionaire's wife because you all see this flashy lifestyle the soft life you all want the soft life right but are you ready to build are you ready to 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 get into that soft life because it's not all rosy as you see it from the outside there, you need to put in so much work you need to work on yourself 
you need to work on your skills you need to work on your education you need to work on your social interaction social status you know you need to work on everything your appearance everything the way you speak the way you interact everything about your life you need to upgrade it so i think the best thing is to start by upgrading yourself if you really want to have a soft life you need to upgrade yourself as a person before looking for your significant other or looking for that person who is going to give you the soft life you should try by lifting yourself up to standards up to par you know i don't know if you understand what i mean but you can't just see it and take your wig and rub it on the on the ground and smash it and make it look tacky and hard and go out and in your mind you're going to attract a rich white guy who's going to give you the soft light girl you're dreaming wake up and smell the coffee there is no free lunch there is no free lunch there is no white guy standing at the other side of the street waiting for you to give you the soft light if there is any maybe it will be one for like one thousand black girls and remember not all white guys are looking for black girls. You should work on yourselves rather than trying to get a wig. I see all the Gen Zs. I see it's, it's, it's some sort of madness going about all the girls who want to have that hard wig to attract a white guy who is going to spoil them. <laughs> Girl, what do you think about this topic, guys? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. On hard the wig, soft life. life. Where well, I, your host, Ruthie, teach, teach you the ways, ways of attracting a billionaire. Step number one, honey, if the wig is on your hairline, wrong, push it back and up. Higher, higher ladies, higher. The higher the wig, the higher the income. Earn it. Move the hair forward, take pieces, twist them. Twist them quickly, quickly, faster. You don't have time, the billionaires are getting snatched up. Sing it with me. The wig is high, it's tilted, it's matted, it's slanted. Must success arise. Ah, hot. Now that you've perfected the hair, <laughs> lipstick, loud and proud, you want hot pink, bright red. Do you think we're going to go on the lip line? This is, this is too nice. It's too perfect. Okay. Outside. Whatever you learned in school about coloring inside the lines, uh, they were wrong. Now. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but remember my lesson from yesterday. When you think you've had enough blush, please add more blush. This blush is apricot from Bobby Brown. Blush your way out of poverty, ladies. Don't blend it. We've discussed this yesterday. Do not blend it. Oh, I want to look like Wendy Williams. Okay, built like Wendy Williams, I will find me a rich man. Girls out, chest up. Up, up, wig up, the higher, the more it comes. It's signaled, it's nonverbal, it does not even need to be said, and it does not even need to be consciously thought. It's the same way that y'all sit up here and understand that a lot of guys will only specifically hit on you when you leave the house looking bummy. And it's not because, oh, I, I just like your natural beauty. It's not because this, that, and the other. Because they are sitting on Instagram and they're liking the Instagram baddies pics. Mm -hmm. They like the beat. They like the bust mm -hmm. down. They like all of that. Yeah. But they won't walk up to that girl because they don't have what it takes to step to her. They will step to her when she goes to Target with no makeup, looking bummy in sweats, because they assume that she's more accessible at that time. Y'all need to be aware of when you're signaling accessibility. Do with that what you will, but understand that when somebody is excited by your accessibility to them, what that says about them and their intentions with you. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to tell you the two reasons these women are probably actually getting these men, and it's not because of their bad wig. So the first thing is the confidence that they carry. I'm going to tell you right now, when I see a woman whose wig is out of place, moments where my wig has even been out of place, listen, baby, I'm still walking around like all the confidence, top tier, like this joint is slayed to the ends of the earth okay one of the things that a man is really attracted to is a confident woman let's not get confident confused with cocky 
arrogant because sometimes people will carry themselves in a way when their wig and whatnot is slayed, when their face is beat. That doesn't actually exude confidence. It exudes arrogance and don't even think you can step to me because how dare you? I look like this. So it's not the bad wig that's getting these women, these men, a lot of times it's just the confidence that they carry in life that goes way beyond what they look like that the men are actually drawn to. The second thing is men do actually prefer women who are like more natural. So they might be thinking that this bad wig is their natural hair. When I met my hair, when I met my husband, I didn't have on any makeup. Uh, my hair was not in a weave, a wig or anything. It was so basic. And he was like, one of the things that attracted me to you was the fact that you were not all done up. Now, sometimes I like to have fun with the makeup, but my husband, he can literally do without it. And most men can literally do without it because at the end of the day, you don't wake up like that. The moral of the story actually is, if you want to get an amazing man that's going to love you well, be your authentic self, be confident, not cocky, and who that authentic self is and love yourself well. And there's gonna be somebody that's waiting to come and love you well also. A truly transitioning point in my dating life is when I started to value the person that God created me to be. And I really think the more I value that, the more I started to exude that, and the more I exude that, it caused me to meet my husband. And a lot of that had to do too with just because I stopped putting up with so much trash and so much crap. So yeah, I don't think it's the bad wigs. <laughs> I think that it's the confidence that these beautiful women carry and they understand that they are beautifully and wonderfully made regardless of what other people may think about their wig, what other people may think about them, period. And so have that confidence, carry that confidence, and baby, it'll work out well. I only have three hours to get ready. It's when I tell you the comments under that video have been killing me. Hard wig, soft life. I'm about to turn my wig backwards. Anywho's, I'm ready for the soft life. I got the wig ready. Let me say this, no one in this app is ever gonna bully me onto learning how to glue my wigs. Yes, and thank you, girl, because somebody had to say it. We are so tired of living out here in these streets with these bad wigs, girl. We're so tired, we're so tired. So the trending conversation on TikTok right now is hard wig, soft life. The ongoing joke is black women who wear wigs that are little, kind of out there, kind of beat up, not all the way situated, they tend to attract rich white men. Here is my theory on why that is. She's fun. She's charming. She's exciting. She doesn't give a damn. She's just out to have a really good time. She is out to live her life and be loud and boisterous and be seen. And a lot of these men who have resources, that is all that they want. They want a happy, loving, pretty woman on their side. A lot of them, they tend to have um, expensive taste outside of, you know, the hippies. And they tend to fit right into their world. Just having a good time is all that they want. And a lot of women whose wigs are like this, they don't care. They don't think too hard about it. They're just enjoying life. And that's what these men want. Someone to enjoy life with. Think that through. Just think that through.